Hello, this is Eric Bobro with another Archicad tutorial video. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the concept of material schemes and what are the most efficient ways that you can experiment and try out different materials in your project design, either while working alone or directly sitting down with a client. This question came up recently in one of the coaching calls that we have for the best practices course, and I thought it was really interesting and uh, would uh, be very useful for the general Archicad community, so I decided to create this lesson. When you want to play around and change the materials of elements, one very obvious thing is to select the elements directly. So for example, if I select all of these walls and go to their materials, we'll see that they're using a material called default walls exterior. Now I'll go ahead and let's say try out a, a different color. Here's paint 14 and you can see, well, I like that. Let me see what I can do here. Well, one of the issues is if I want to change it back. I have to go and either undo that right away or select these walls um, again. Um, and I certainly, uh, it, it will take a little while to select all the walls and make sure that they all change together. So, you know, that's a little bit cumbersome. Let me um, go ahead uh, and show you one way that we can select um, elements selectively here using Edit, Find, and Select. And for example, if I use the eyedropper, so I'll hold down the Option key on the Mac um, or Alt on Windows, you can say that I'm looking for walls that have a material of a certain style. And I hit the plus sign, and you can see it's picked just those walls. So let me put them back to the um, uh, material that I had before, which was the default walls exterior color. And then I'll use the eyedropper to pick up the settings here, and then do a plus, and the selected, you know, all of these walls that um, you can see. So let me go ahead and change them to another color. Let's uh, try this blue color just to make it really obvious. Now, you may have noticed that in addition to the walls that were one color, it also picked up the walls on this upper area that were a um, cedar shingle. And it didn't pick up the walls that had a similar color here that actually are a complex profile. So each one of these walls is made up of many pieces that um, have different materials. So this is a, a somewhat limited way to do it. You can do it in certain simple cases, but it's definitely not going to get you all the way that the way you uh, would like. So I'll undo this change here, and we'll see that, you know, for some reason it, it ended up selecting these walls incorrectly and, of course, didn't affect those other ones there. So uh, let's look at the idea of changing the definition of the material. So if I go to Options, Element, Attributes, Materials, here's the default walls exterior, and I'll go to the surface color. And uh, let's see, um, I'll just drag this down um, here and save this material as color so I can get it back later if I want. But I'll change the color, let's say, to uh, you know, perhaps a little bit of a taupe color there and say OK. And you see that that changed everything that used that material designation of the default walls exterior. So all of the walls that were purely that color and the parts of the walls that were referring to that same material. And it, of course, didn't affect the cedar shingles here. Now, one of the limitations of that approach is that if I want to get back or play around and, and back and forth between different materials, I have to again return to the same place and manually recreate that material. So in this case, it's not too hard. I can double click on the surface color and click on the color that I have saved carefully and say OK and it will all be restored. But if I had done anything with textures or hatching or any other um, settings, it would take a little while and definitely would be a nuisance to have to change that back. So let's take a look at an option that could uh, affect uh, more than one material at once and record everything about the materials before you make a change. So I'll go under Options, Element Attributes, Attribute Manager. And in this case, once it brings up the Attribute Manager, I'll be able to look at materials, which are just one example of attributes. 
Uh, so here is materials. We could be looking at layers here, or we can look at materials or any other attribute. And they're sorted by index number, which doesn't mean a lot to me in personally, but it does mean a lot to the computer because it records the attributes by the number, which allows you to change the name at any time and it can keep track of it. But to find the material that I'm interested in, I it's easier to sort by name, and here's default walls exterior. What I'm going to do is take this line item and overwrite, which moves a copy of it to the right side. Where did it go? It went into what's called uh, the current file, which is untitled AAT. So this is actually a file with a different ending than you may be used to. AAT stands for Attribute Manager File. And this um, uh, file records attributes such as materials or layers and other things like that. Now if I scroll down, I think it was in 07, we have the one that's the Cedar Shake, and I will overwrite that as well. And I'm using the overwrite command because then it will keep the number, the index number. If I did append, it would probably put these as number 1 and 2 or something like that. Having done that, I can go ahead and save this. And I've been doing this before, so I'm just going to name it as Material Scheme 1 on my desktop. And I'll overwrite the previous file that I had. But this is saving a copy for later use. Now, I haven't made any change to the materials, but now I can go ahead and freely change them and bring them back. So let's go back to the attribute definition for materials, change the color, and let's make this um, sort of uh, maybe this color here. Um, and uh, perhaps go and make a, a different change to the one that uh, was for the cedar shake and say we're going to simplify this we're going to take a texture and instead of having this uh, board pattern I'll search and perhaps um, take uh, something that is uh, a sandstone so you can see this is the material it's going to use and here's the preview up above and I want to change its name because it's not cedar shake so I'll change the name to um, you know wall accent color. So I'm now changing it to its functional use or design reference as opposed to it, what material it's really made of. Um, when I say OK, I've made two changes and you can see that the walls that were the exterior default changed to the slight green and the walls that were the cedar shingle changed to the new designation. And when I select the wall, you can see that it says wall accent color. So it kept the same index number, but that index number now has a new name. Now, I don't really like that, so let me bring back the old one. And you could have multiple versions by going to Attribute Manager and having saved one material scheme. Perhaps I, maybe there is something about this that I'd like to look at later. So I'll go and sort uh, by number here. I'll take the default walls exterior and I'll scroll down to all the way down near the bottom wall accent color. I'll use the command key or it would be the control key on Windows to select these two separately without doing all the ones in between which would happen if you hit the shift key and I'll say overwrite and I'll go ahead and save this in this case I'll do it material team 2 rather than 1 and I'll replace the earlier version that I had. Now I'm going to go and close this file on the right side and load in by opening, by clicking in the same place, the Open button, and I'll get Material Scheme 1. So we can open up Attribute Manager files, which are AAT files, as well as we can open up PLN. You notice that I can highlight and select uh, this uh, one from a, a project or a training file. Let me just pick the Material Scheme 1, though, and open it. And I'll select both of these, and I'll overwrite. And you notice that the default walls exterior has changed, and so uh, as well the cedar shake. And it warns me that I'm modifying the materials. And you can see instantly I'm back to where I was. So we can develop as many different schemes as we like um, and uh, take this as far um, as we need. I'll go ahead and look at a, another option here. So if I zoom in on this and we select you know, one of the typical windows in the project and open up its settings. 
we'll see that for the casing on the outside material, it's called Paint 02 Whitewash. If I were to change the definition of Paint 02 Whitewash to make it gray or blue, then everything that uses that material reference would update. That might not be such a good idea because, after all, I might have other things like the walls inside might use that same material. So instead of changing the definition there, what I'm going to do is select all of the windows. So I'll go to the Window tool, select all windows. And this may have some limitations if you have windows from different libraries, but in general you should be able to take windows of the same style, same library, let's say here it's the casing, and I'm going to go to the materials of it and change this to just for a minute, I'll change it to a material I know I haven't used in this project, Paint 09 Red, and say OK, and we'll see instantly that these these uh, the window casing has changed. And maybe I'll even do that to the doors. So I'll go to the Edit menu, select all doors, put the, the casing on both sides to be red. Having done that, I can now go to the Element Attributes, Materials, Paint 09 Red, and I can rename it and call this Casings. So now I'm naming it by its function, and perhaps I'll go and change its color to something like that, and say OK. And you can see instantly all of the casings for the doors and windows have changed to the new look. So I, of course, can combine that approach with the previous one in terms of material schemes and save out different versions of the casings um, material and reuse or bring them back in um, as I wish. So we just uh, looked at several different options for uh, changing materials and bringing them in and saving uh, them that touch upon a number of the keys to best practices for ARCHICAD that I've identified. There are seven keys to best practices in my system, and one of them has to do with saving your settings. It's always a good idea to find ways to save the work that you've done, in this case defining the materials, so that you can reuse those settings. Another thing is uh, understanding and taking advantage of ARCHICAD structure. So understanding that the material definition can be changed and all elements that have that material will update is actually more efficient than, in many cases, than selecting the elements and putting them into a different material like I did at first, because that only affected certain walls and not parts of walls that uh, were similar. Uh, so that's using the structure. And another concept that is one of the seven keys has to do with working from the general to the specific. So if we think about uh, the wall color, so if I select this wall, and we look at the material name, it was named default walls exterior. So it was named by a general functionality, meaning that the walls on the outside in general were this one material. Of course, some of them were this other material, the cedar shake um, or shingle. The um, concept here is that if you name it by its function or by a general term, then later you can go in and get specific. You can make decisions and say, well, I'd like this to be this particular material or paint color. Um, so by choosing a general designation rather than trying to get it right or perfect or make a decision prematurely, you're going to save time and effort and stress because you don't have to get it perfect at first. You simply have to designate things generally with some proper um, category information so that later when you modify that category definition of what is the default wall color, everything will update very nicely. So. This has been Eric Bobro. I hope you enjoyed this ARCHICAD tutorial video. I look forward to getting your comments and feedback. Uh, you can email me or you can post um, comments down below this video. Thanks for watching.